guys, it's Jolly here, and today we're going to be playing Hand of Fate. Back so soon? I knew you would not falter. And no, this is not the beginning. I actually have played through quite a bit of this so far, and I decided now would be a good time to do it because there's a bunch of little DLC cards, and <laughs> mainly I wanted to get a hang of it before I did any Let's Plays of this because I had no idea how this the game more worked. You play, the more I wonder. You wonder what? If you will ever defeat me? So, I've beaten this first row and I'm up to the guy called the Jack of Scales. And this game's really cool the way it works. It's like a combination of, like, D&D &D with a little bit of action RPG, and you move along a board that's made of cards, and you're gonna have to see it to figure out what's happening, because it's really cool and hard to explain. So this has got some modifiers to it. Mana Drain. Cooldown times for weapons and artifacts are doubled. That's pretty bad. That means the special abilities I get with my weapons aren't going to be used very much. And Last Man Standing. In every combat, the last enemy alive can no longer be stunned or interrupted. That's really bad. The suit of scales are represented by these lizard men. Quiet, patient, lethally subtle and coldly intelligent. Of all the creatures I have incarnated as suits, these please me the most. Oh lord. So you build, as you go along in the game and in complete encounter cards and things like that, you get, well, cards of your own basically, and you add them to your deck before the adventure. So that's how you power up your character almost, is you have a better chance of getting better items. Now, I don't know what that does, but I'm going to take it, because all these new ones, I don't know what they do. And I don't want any of the regular weapons, because you already start with a pretty good... I think I start with an axe on my guy. Now let's take Spirit Walk. Alright. Now, we're going to change our fate, which is like this special, almost class modifier thing. They have really weird things to them. Chance cards are more difficult. You do increased damage as your combo meter rises. They kind of twist up the gameplay. But I want to just use the regular guy. And these are actually like encounters, like D&D Dungeons and Dragons encounters that you run into. And I don't know what most of these do, so let's just start adding some. All these new ones that I haven't done. Stranger in the Shadows. And where's the DLC one? That's Indecent Arrival. That's one of the new cards that they've come out with for free. So we're good to get started now. <laughs> you have taken one of my symbols, but now we begin to play in earnest. My scepter is at stake, and I do not intend to lose it. So wait, do I get his scepter if I win this whole uh, game and defeat all of his cards? Oh my, this is lagging a little bit. Scales. I have saved the lizard men for now, but the stakes have been raised. There is no weapon I will not use against you. Alright, apparently this is where shit gets real. Mr. Lytle! Whilst enjoying your evening meal at the local tavern, a strange old man takes the seat next to yours. He taps your shoulder quite painfully with his wooden staff to get your attention, and you notice that he appears to be a goblin poorly disguised as a human. His wizened face grins at you with a hint of madness. My name is Mr. Lionel. If you give me what I need, boy, I will conjure up your heart's desire with this wizarding wand of my own creation. He cackles uncontrollably for a few moments, then sits patiently, waiting for your answer. So, I can... This is like a little choose-your-own-adventure part, and I'm just going to give him the bread, because I don't have anything since this is the start of this adventure. He considers the bread seriously, before carefully before placing it carefully in his coat pocket, seemingly self-satisfied. He then sits, considering you for a while, before slapping the table with his hand. Aha! I know what you need. Mr. Lionel brandishes his staff and smacks you on the head. When you come to, you find yourself in a place you don't recognize with your blanket com tucked comfortably around you. Did he just teleport me? 
He literally moved me one square forward. Thanks, Lionel. You see a weapon glinting in the sunlight, lying next to a skeleton at the bottom of the canyon. So this is going to be one of those risk-reward things. The walls of the canyon are covered in thick vines, perfect for climbing. I can leave it alone or climb down and try and get the weapon. Of course I'm going to try and get the weapon. And you'll see how this works. They shuffle the deck, a choice. and that's the failure. Select your desire. If you pay close attention, sometimes you can figure out which one's the failure. And that was it. Very carefully, you make your way to the bottom of the canyon. You retrieve the weapon from the ancient corpse. And I draw a weapon card. And I get an awesome magic weapon. This mace inflicts more damage the lower the health of the wielder is. And I'll replace this my axe with you. that. Ooh, this is good. Aha! The Count enters the picture. Is he a vampire? Sounds like vampire -y. Let us stake a token on their foolishness. On a dark, moonless night, down a lonely road, you encounter a hooded stranger. Greetings, friend. I am in need of some sustenance. Oh yeah, totally a vampire. And when it's the first time you encounter a card, if you successfully complete it, you get a token which basically just unlocks another encounter card. Would you be willing to offer some of your vigor in exchange for gold, he asked, taking out a bag of coins. Uh, you know what? I want that token, so go ahead and select me dry. The stranger moves with unnatural speed to grasp you firmly and bite at your throat. After a few seconds, he releases you. How much damage did he just do to me? Oh, ten. That's not bad. Thank you, he says, handing you some gold as you regain your composure. I am not yet sated. Would you like to earn more gold? Oh, God, sure. The stranger moves with unnatural speed to grasp to release you. Mortal, you seem no mortal. You seem unusually willing to give up your blood for material gain. The stranger goes on to tell you a tale of secret blood auctions and where they may be found. The card's token is another yours. token brings you closer to your goals. That was actually a good amount of money for twenty health lost. A horse is a fine companion. I'm sure you'll leave this one in time. You do not seem to have the temperament for friends, even in the animal kingdom. He's so mean. So when you get those tokens, like I just did, he was telling me about a secret blood auction. So that card is probably something like hidden auctions. You found a friendly trader willing to let you ride on his wagon. Oh, that sounds wrong. I appreciate your efforts. I worked hard on this game. It is a pleasure to see you play. A ship at dock is worth nothing until it sails. That feels like a nice little nod from the developers. What he just said. A wife's fury. You may wish to interfere here. Myself, I leave people to their own devices. Well, Except, of course, for those who make the great journey to come here and bother me. <laughs> While traveling through a small town, you're accosted by a furious woman who shouts at you from the door of her homestead. You there! You look like you can handle yourself. My husband was supposed to be home hours ago, but instead he's with his pals drinking away all our coin. They left the spoils from their latest job here. If you go and teach him a lesson, you can take your pick. What do you say? And she's like, I'm gonna go to the tavern and confront the husband. The more powerful I can get before I fight the boss at the end of all this, the better. Now here's someone with some sense. I would go and crack his skull myself, but our dragon cow is birthing a litter and might burn the whole place down. I want to see a dragon cow. That sounds awesome. You find the woman's husband, who is a boss, apparently. You corner the woman's... Oh, pfft. that is not said in her voice. You corner the woman's husband at the local tavern. He is busy playing a drinking game with his friends. Now, I have done this one before, and I did the join the drinking game, and if you fail that, you take, like, a bunch of damage. Okay. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. don't get me killed by a boss. Oh! 
The man eyes you uncertainly, but agrees to go back with you. Once home, the wife hands you a sack, saying, Take your pick. Oh, that's actually rather good. I think I already have medium armor. What's fool's gold do? Every Bandits weapon... never made good servants. Greed always came before common sense. On every weapon ability usage, all bandits are stunned for three seconds. Every bandit killed next to player two gold. So there actually is combat in this, which I'm sure you'll see soon. And you get money whenever you heal. A tool used by those who made life better that. for others now in your hands. Such a waste. And a shop. In a shady grove off the beaten trail, you find a traveling merchant looking to trade with wandering adventurers. Mages sell only specific items that they discover in faraway lands. Their prices can be high, but they also pay well for anything that catches their interest. Yes, yes. Come now, Gandalf. I wanted to say Fat Gandalf because I just saw Deadpool. For those of you that haven't seen Deadpool, go watch Deadpool. It's really funny. Let's see what he has to buy. Damocles throws knives. Dragon ring. I guess if you get a bunch of dragon items, you get better at everything. Each strike inflicts a curse, slowing and weakening your opponent. I think I might get that. I'm gonna get that. It's not enough that you kill them, you'll curse them too. Damn straight. Now, do I have anything to sell? I think I have an axe. Yeah, so I replaced my axe with desperate measures. It's a really awesome weapon. Now I have 13 food, and this is like Oregon Trail status for every square you move. Eats a food. If you're out of food, you lose 10 health. If you move when you have food, you gain 5 health, as in healing over travel time. Rat of course, hunting. killing their leader is a fine way to provoke them. <clears throat> yep, that was the previous boss. You stumble upon a ratman hunting party. Prepare to defend yourself, and the dealer draws you one monster card. <clears throat> this is the combat part. And rats are my least favorite to fight, because they're annoying, and they poison you, and they're fast, and they have weird unblockable attacks. Well, I should have let you see that animation, but here we go. Combat in this game is simple, but neat, and it works with gaining more power as you go. Oh, crap. It's got, like, Arkham... Uh, Batman Arkham game style... Counter the greens, dodge the red flashes, you can stun with some hits. And I think, does this, this weapon doesn't have any special abilities. Why am I taking so much damage? Ha, huh, not even hitboxes can stop my character. And I got food for I'm me. sure you're grateful for that. Forest escape? What's this one? Oh, it's just the exit. Okay. What brings you to play the game? Ha. I know you will not tell me. Like all the rest, you are oh. silent. Ooh, the Dead King's Hall. You see an ancient, ornate coffin in the main burial chamber. It may hold the spectacular wealth. But it will surely be guarded. That's six bandits. I'm gonna fight them. What is huge fail? I don't think I've ever gotten huge failure before. Crap. Uh, oh. You're spotted as you approach, and the creatures ready themselves for combat. If you succeed on that one, you get to choose one of these two to discard, because apparently your ambush was so successful that you took out four bandits at once. Here's the way it, it actually shows your character's cards going down for your armor, your weapons, your abilities, and, oh my god, that's a lot of enemies, and your enemies coming on. I think there's traps here, too. Yeah, there's traps all over the place. I'm going to kind of hide in the corner. Block. Block. Roll! Now I need to be careful to stay away from those traps, because those will hurt me. 
a lot, actually. If you time your blocks well on basic little guys like this, since they don't have any uh, attacks that can... Oh crap, I was wrong! They do have attacks that can ignore uh, blocking. When they flash red like that, you have to dodge. But usually you can just counter with Q, and that's pretty easy. The game has a very generous system for that. Three game cards, that's a lot. Draw two and select one. What do these do? Increases the I was always a speed. fan of being fleet of mind. You'll have to settle for being fleet of foot. I'm going to keep the hag wraps, but I'm going to bring these because they're worth more than the sword, and I can just sell these at a shop if I have the chance to. 15 gold. And a shield, which I already have. Fling your opponent's challenges back in their faces. Merchant. In a shady grove off the beaten trail, you find a traveling merchant looking to trade with wandering adventurers. Greetings, wise traveler. Oh, greetings, wise traveler. I have much to offer you. I think I might have put in a little bit too much strange in that accent. Let's see if he has anything I even want to buy. Angel's Wing. Helm imbues the Greer with greater movement speed. Ooh. Success Chance cards award gold. That's actually really cool. Healing Cap. Any healing the player receives is doubled. I'm going to buy that if I can. Do I have anything? I, yep, see, I have the Pleat Cuffs to sell. And I have the Shield to sell. But here's my choice. I have 12 food, which is worth 12 movement. I don't know how long this dungeon, as you would call it, is. So, with 37 gold, I think I'm going to buy food instead of that healing cap. Because I don't really need that healing cap. The boss is probably on the next level of this card encounter. Ooh, bandit attack. A group of bandits suddenly attacks. The King of Dust isn't happy about you killing his men. The dealer draws you one monster card. And, okay, two bandits. That's not bad, and I'm probably going to get some treasure from this. And when you start in a dungeon encounter, whatever you want to call it, let's go with the dungeon. When you start the quest to beat a boss, you start with some basic little gear like a shield and an axe and nothing else. And you build your way up by encounters and shops and getting better items. Oh, roll, roll! Oh, crap. Look at his mutton chops! Among the bodies, you find a scrap of parchment with a rough description of you, plus an offer of reward from the King of Dust. A field of poppies. We oh, flee crap, into all one. sorts of vices, do we not? All in the hope that we will forget. You wander among a field of poppies. Too late, you realize the poppies make me sleepy. That was the exit right there, damn it. Can I go there? Oh. Wait, I think it went there. Which, anyway, oh, I think I'm getting a text. Ah, oh, crap. Bandit attack. A group of bandits suddenly attacks. The King of Dust isn't happy about you killing his men. I'm gonna start rolling over here and get these guys that are throwing stuff at me. Wow! Oh, nice. Lock. Haha! <laughs> this actually is 
a little bit less easy because there's so many of them. I'm worried about finding the, fighting the Lizard King at the end of this because I played this before, like a long time ago. And I think I might have gotten this far, but I don't remember fighting the Lizard King boss or whatever he is, the Jack of Scales. All right, let's make our way all the way back. Oh, Dead King's Hall again. The Jack Ooh. of Skulls returns to the fray. Holy sh no. Did you expect any left? Fucking, we're sneaking away. I'm not trying to fight two bosses at once. I didn't pay any attention to that. Did any of you guys? Oh. What happens? Okay, I just escaped. Traveling Tinkerer. Uh, pass it by. It's gonna have the same stuff. So we need to make our way to the boss. Bound once more, seeking the heart of it all. So we are going to take the stairs down. Boop. Wait. Let's press continue, really. Did you expect me to tell your fortune? No. A fortune teller is at their most base and despicable when they begin to believe their own lies. Of course, I am different. The song My powers are. are genuine. Okay, Mr. Dealer. The Mug and Barrel Inn is renowned for attracting the most talented barbs from all around. Bar bards, not barbs. Bards from all around. You arrive there weary from your adventures, but tonight's entertainment convinces you to settle by the hearth for a while. Hours pass and the crowd starts to thin. The bard begins to move around the room, playing requests for small groups. He serenades a pair of young lovers for a meager sum, and then is generously tipped for leading a group of blacksmiths in a raucous chorus of foul language aimed at the folks from the next town over. He approaches you. Well, well, well. What do we have here, most distinguished adventurer? No tawdry tale of insipid chivalry or brash tribalism. Tribalism will do you, sir. Merit a stirring ballad of bloodshed, heroism, and death. The bard sings you, for you the fable of the White Minotaur, a legendary beast who is master of both Come might now, and magic. Come now, We oh. don't have forever. Fuck off. Its power is such that it has felled every adventurer, bounty hunter, or treasure seeker it has ever crossed. After the close of the story, close of his song, the bard leans in close to you and whispers, The white minotaur is no myth. I met a man two nights ago who hunts for this beast, as if he were its long shadow. I'd wager that any adventurer would be interested in the tales he told me over supper. All yours for a small donation. Wait, can I just give him money? Crap, I want to just give him money. Ah, uh, that. Ah! Oh, damn it. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll pay 15 gold. I can live with that. <clears throat> the bard bestows upon you all of the knowledge that he has gleaned about the White Minotaur. Where do I go now? Ooh! This is one of the DLC ones. I will happily wager on the outcome. I do no. not think you have what it takes. That's ominous. No witch port is little more than wooden planks sticking out over water. It's a den of iniquity. Visitors and inquiries are obviously not welcome. You spend your time getting acquainted with the workings of the wharf, looking for avenues to gain information. You have found three ways you might find out about the missing ships, which is from a previous card. A guy in an inn told me to go look for some shady shit in a tavern. You might find out about the missing ship. Steal some logs, bribe a worker, or help the captain drown his sorrows. Oh god. I should have done something else. Yes! That's what happens when you watch him. With quick hands, you steal away some barely legible documents. They tell you about some of the contraband being moved around, but nothing references the missing ships. Before you leave, your theft is noticed. I might be doing some fighting here. Oh, maybe not. Ugh. More rats. Jesus, six rats. 
And I haven't gotten much in the way of, like, better equipment either. And I'm poisoned. I don't do well against rats. At least it's not spiders. I hate spiders. Just keep swinging! Alright, you little bastard. Oh, crap trap. Yes! Oh, wow, I lost almost half of my health on that. That was not good. <clears throat> Call for a priest? What the heck's that do? In a shady grove off the beaten trail, you find a traveling merchant looking to trade with wandering adventurers. I don't really have any money. I'm just going to keep going. <clears throat> Let's make it to the dragon. You continue forwards. You must first descend the ladder into the unknown. At their heart, all games are about power, are they not? The acquiring of power. I really don't have money the retaining to buy stuff. of power. And most importantly, the use of power. Well, that's he's not wrong. That is what most games are about. While crossing the ancient rope bridge of Dead Man's Gorge, you hear sounds of movement from below. It's an ambush. Oh, I get to find out what the scales are. I think they're just lizard folk. Little koboldy bastards. <clears throat> Destroy all the boxes. Whoa, they have shields. That's annoying. And fireballs and unblockable attacks. I am so boned. And a lot of health. Wow, I'm. I don't say wailing on these guys, but it's gonna sound odd. I am wailing on these lizard folk. They are not going down easy. Bam! Oh, he's dead. Are you different? Do you just shoot fireballs and that's all you do? Because you don't have a shield. Fuck. He looks derpy. Like big bucktooth dragon bastard. Three game cards, that's good. 25 gold. <clears throat> One item. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I guess we'll just get the healing cap. In my day, we simply avoided One being point. wounded. Healing will suffice, however. Achievement One called combat ready. Each type of equipment, and you're ready to take on the world. All right, we've got a little bit of money now. I don't even know what traveling jewelers do. I've never been able to buy anything at one of these. <clears throat> Oh, they just spell special items. Spirit Walk. During combat, press to become ethereal, avoiding all damage until your next attack. That sounds awesome. <clears throat> I have everything equipped. Shit. No, I'm gonna buy food with my money. I'm sure you are grateful for that. Alright, let's see if we can find the dragon. Ooh, Crucible. No, the battlefield I don't want to do this. of honor. Or at least a close approximation. I probably should have just fought the Crucible, but I don't want to lose health right before the boss. No. Nope. Choose that, from these that one? options. Damn it. What happens? Oh, pain cards. Almost at the other side, you slip and sink beneath the surface. Luckily, your light armor makes it easy to recover and escape the waters. The dealer draws you two pain cards. Ah. How unpleasant. Okay, I can live with the gold loss. Holy crap, I should have just gone straight down. A slight rustling behind you is all the warning you get that your life is in grave danger. Two monster cards, four rats. S Holy shit, this is ten rats. I'm probably going to die.
Don't miss any blocks. Roll! Roll! Oh, roll right into that. Oh my god! Screw you guys for shooting the ones that are throwing darts. Okay, got him. Hopefully there'll be a little bit less stuff chucked at me from across the screen now. Oh, I thought the shield bash would interrupt the heavy attacks. Guess not. Alright, we should almost be at the end here. Yeah, sneak up and kill him. Searching the area for anything worth salvaging, you realize that one of your opponents is pretending to be- Ah, crap, which one was that? Did... Okay. Three game cards. I'm gonna get this because I bet the dragons are fire based. Get a little food. food. Not a great change. Fifteen. But enough to switch the odds a little. Oh my god, there's another level to this. The lizard men are nothing if not patient. He waits for you. Okay, so he's on this level. Battle of Brooktop. Are your senses acute enough to detect what lies here? A light draws you to the nearby hilltop where you see a warlock disappear in a cloud of sulfur, leaving behind his summoned minions. Draw two monster cards. I think we're going to leave this episode right here. And thank you for watching, everybody. Give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more. I'm sure I'll probably put out both parts to this video today. Or tomorrow. Yeah. You won't know what day I'm talking about until they're out. But everybody have a great day and press that little subscribe button.